Okay, will be another. Okay, uh, another two minutes, maybe. Okay, Ahmad, we may before we start the, the session, please. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning to all the participants. Let me introduce myself again. My name is Ahmad Laupe, as your host for today. And for this session, we will be moderated by Professor Chandra Setiadi. And today we have a very uh, interest, interesting, interesting topic. It's about emerging technologies in on-site wastewater treatment that will present by Professor Professor Tamarat Kontatev. Sorry, yeah, Tamarat Kontatev. Sorry, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Before we start. Uh, we before we proceed to the lecture, uh, I will, will uh, allow me to show to the participant first about more about uh, Professor Kontatep, about his biography. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so Professor Tamar Kontatep is a professor of the environmental engineering management of the Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. He is an internationally recognized professional on fecal sludge management, sanitation systems, and wastewater treatment technology. His major scholarly uh, contributions include publications more of more than 60 refereed international journal papers, three books, and nine book chapters. He has invented sanitation technologies, one of which is added to his uh, credit and several uh, filling. He has join, jointly developed a professional master degree program in regenerative sanitation and method 18 doctoral students. He has secured significant fund projects, including research and training grants, and most notably, the Bill and Belinda Gates Foundation grants on decentralized wastewater management in developing countries, design, operation, and monitoring. He has contributed significantly to capacity building in fecal sludge management and decentralized wastewater treatment systems in Thailand and abroad, including capacity strengthening of policymakers. So uh, that was about uh, Professor Tamat Kotatep. So uh, without wasting any more time, uh, I would like to give the session to our modera moderator, uh, Professor Chandra Satyadi. You may proceed, sir. OK, uh, good morning. So, so I show the, so the, in the, in the uh, CV, so the, the picture of Professor Tamarat, because he is a, a big fan of the Liverpool. <laughs> and uh, this year, he is the the champions, uh, the league champions. So uh, you'll never walk alone. <laughs> so uh, uh, Professor Tamarat is a friend of mine. So uh, we will proceed with uh, his lecture. We are, uh, has been uh, mentioned by Ahmad. So the, his lecture is uh, about the emerging uh, technology on on-site uh, with uh, visual treatment. Uh, for domestic visual treatment. Uh, uh, Tamarat, you will control by yourself for, uh, the presentation? Uh, you are still on mute, okay. Yeah, I, I control by myself. Okay, okay, please go ahead. Please, the time is your Tamarat. Okay, 
Okay. So, terima kasih uh, Pak Chandra and terima kasih all the, the participants that joining me to celebrate the champions. Liverpool. <laughs> 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 Thanks a lot for that. Anyway, I will try to give you um, the ideas of that. Uh, what would be the so-called emerging technologies on the on-site wastewater treatment system? In my opinion, and or in my experience as well. Okay, you can see, you can hear me well, right? Yes, yes, great, great. Very nice. So as the um, introduced by Pat Ahmed that uh, uh, we have involved in the quite a sizable grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that uh, the name of the program is about the reinventing the toilets program, which I'd like to share with you that how should we develop and how should we uh, uh, consider the, the, the technologies to be further developed and applied. Then the, I'd like to also address to you that the, we need to talk about that sanitation that in particular to the, the on-site wastewater treatment system or the, the centralized wastewater treatment system. We need to achieve the SDG, SDG 6 in particular, which I try to propose to the, the, the society that the sanitation, we can reach up to that sanitation 4.0 as well, similar to those, the, the industrial, uh, licensations or some others that we need to, to step up in, not rather than just having the toilets, but we need to think about that, how you should improve the, the system with better. Then the, my key outlines for today discussions or the presentations, and then of course, uh, your question and answer from your side would be very important as well that we can discuss about the, the unveiled sanitation challenges that were important, at least to my uh, country, to my opinions, that uh, the, quite similar to Indonesia and some other developing countries, we remain lots of challenges that we may not be able to achieve simply by having a new pipes, a new treatment system, but we need to think in a way or another way around. So that the key highlights would be about the innovations and emerging technologies that are very important for us to talk today that how should we develop innovations or we just think from the technology point of view is that well, we can uh, use the, the, the spaceship, the toilets applied to the slum in the, the Jakarta or in Bandung, but is that applicable, applicable and also acceptable to the users or not? that we need to think about what would they mean by innovations and also that some other emerging technologies that applicable to the, the low income societies or not. The last one I just like to address to you is about that the ventures to overcome the sanitation challenges, whether our emerging technology on the wastewater treatment system can overcome the sanitation challenge or not, or do we need the other ventures as well rather than just thinking of that, well, we have the better toilets, we have a better on-site treatment technologies, whether it is enough to overcome the sanitation challenges or not, that which would be the room for discussion further. And I would propose some idea that what would be the wages. Then the, just talk briefly about this, the uh, SDG 6 that uh, we may like to discuss about that 6.2 and 6.21, 6.31, that talk about the end of open education and improve quality of wastewater treatment and safe reuse. You may have uh, uh, impressed that uh, in Thailand, we uh, achieved the MDG, the Millennium Development Goal, not the SDG, quite successfully in the past decades. But uh, if we look into further details, just like to share with you that, uh, well, uh, from the statistics, we said 99.5% we have the success in providing the, the toilets or the safe toilets to the people uh, in the uh, 19, uh, 2009. Then the, uh, most of the, the toilets would be uh, power flush system, whereas only in the urban city, this relies on the flush uh, flushing system or the flush tank system that uh, from the toilets. And then the most of the cases in the either in the urban or in the peri-urban or the rural area really lies on the cesspit, cesspool system. Whereas we use very few the commercial package or the, the treatment units, 
but that would be only for the new housing estate will install such a system. Then the, if you talk about the domestic wastewater management in Thailand in particular, about 10 million cubic meter a day uh, produced from the, the about 8,000 8, local administrative organizations all over the countries. We have 77 provinces and then the local administrative organization, we have many more. But uh, even we said we achieved the MDG in the 2009, but we can uh, install only 105 centralized wastewater treatment plants that in the year 2018. And not so lucky that uh, about that 105 treatment plants, only 60% is functioning, whereas the other 40 uh, plants is not so functioning well so that they would have just a pond system like uh, the, the, the fish ponds, but no one taking care of the ponds, then uh, it's not that functioning as we propose to be. Then it is invested already based on the government budget, also the loans, also from the, 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 the grants from many of the donors. We invested already 1.8 billion US dollar for such a uh, centralized treatment system. Then the, <clears throat> Uh, but, but that capacity of the 105 treatment plants, we can treat about uh, 2.6 million cubic meter a day from if they if they, they, they functioning well. Then it means that uh, the, the remaining uh, every day is about 7 million cubic meter a day we discharge without any treatments to the, 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 the environment in, in Thailand. And majority of the treatment system, as you can see here, that majority would be the stabilization ponds, the very conventional, uh, traditional technologies that we use in the rural areas. And in the city, we may use active sludge and some use that electric lagoons. And then the, uh, based on that, we can say that, well, it's not successfully practiced to, to cover or the, the treatment plan. And after the 2018, so far until this year, we haven't heard any new investment from the governments or from the development banks that they would like to expand more so that we still have a huge challenges to, to cover on this if we would like to meet the SDG in the year 2030. But anyway, uh, another problem I just like to share with you, and this would be uh, for most of the country, if we talk about that, the on-site treatment units. So if you talk about that, the on-site treatment system, like the cesspit, cesspool, septic tank, or uh, commercial septic tank that available in the market, <clears throat> it is to me, it's just a kind of a storage. And then waiting for someone to empty, whereas there would be a certain liquid effluent that can connect to the combined sewer or the drainage system that can discharge, but whereas the majority of the pollutions, the pollutants here in the septic tank remains for remove by the emptying services. If you have uh, the, the good system like uh, the, the truck, then the empty truck or the webcam truck can empty it for you. But if not, many in the slum area, you still on the manual emptying services, which is not that good at all. And uh, the, the, it's not that good. Uh, if you just use that the truck to empty your toilets, but you discharge right away to the water bodies, then the, if you are good enough, you should have uh, the fecal sludge treatment plants. Once you have either the, the, the treatment system or the on-site treatment system, you need to provide how should we uh, manage the sludge you collected from that uh, treatment system as well, or either to provide as uh, the fertilizers or apply to the farmlands. That, that would be the things that, that we would wish to, to go. But the uh, unviewed sanitation, just like to share with you that uh, as we mentioned about that uh, 10 million uh, yeah, cubic meter a day. So majority of the treatment plants uh, uh, is not covering or the, the treatment system, but it is about that 27 or 30% at most. But the remaining uh, pollutants here from the toilets, it would be from the cesspool or commercial septic tank that the majority of the pollution will uh, go by the, the wet pump trucks. Whereas uh, you can notice here that almost 90% of the trucks 
it collect the, the, the sludge without any treatment. And then they just discharge somewhere, somehow on the land, to the, the rivers, to the canals. And then that could cause a heavy pollution as well. So if we talk like this to the, the, the SDG, it, we, we, we will not be able to uh, claim ourselves that we will soon uh, comply with the SDG. That uh, if we, we talk about SDG, we have to manage properly all the sludge here as well, rather than just thinking of that centralized treatment system. And if you would like to divert the, the, the system on the on-site or the, or the decentralized system to be the, the pipe or the sewer system, then we need to stop using the commercial septic tank or the cesspool. But I'm sure that it would be the same as in your country, in my country, and in other Southeast Asian countries as well, that once we install the drainage or the sewer system, we still use this kind of uh, the, the on-site system that only the, the liquid parts will go into the sewer system. So that would be the, 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 the sanitation issues or the challenges that we are facing so far. Then the, uh, that's why I uh, just like to, to share with you some ideas that what would be the solution and the solutions for the toilets, for the, the pit latrines, for the septic tank, for the sewerage, would that be okay or not? As we have uh, a study in the, the textbook, in many of that, the, the, the handbooks are so called that, well, if you have the hanging toilets, you just provide the pit latrines, or uh, if you have enough money, why the septic tank, if you have more money, go to for the sewerage system. But, there would be many other issues, upcoming issues like um, uh, what, what about the, the, the flower odors or the safety hazards if they have to use like that. So the conventional solution may not be the, 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 the solution for all. Like here, if you just copy the, the similar system that used in Japan, in Europe to provide more and more civil system, the question would be up to your government that you have enough budget or not or the, 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 the municipality that you have to talk about, hey, you have enough budget or the donor would like to give you the loans for this kind of system or not. So that would be the question. So we need to think another way around. But anyway, if we talk about that, um, the total uh, pictures of the, the, the uh, Asian uh, uh, sanitation, we still rely on most of the, the, the decentralized on the on-site treatment system, either in Thailand, uh, you, you can see that 83% of the equipped septic tanks or uh, in Indonesia, you said about that at 63% equipped the septic tank. So that, that's still there. Whether we just stop using the septic tank and convert to the, the big uh, central treatment plants as mentioned by the person Marcos that, uh, well, it could be, but what would be the cost? What would be the investment to do? Or you may like to slowly improve your septic tanks to have a better treatment for, for performance. And then of course, you need to taking care of that the fee cost large as well. So that would be the, 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 the issues or the challenges all the world, the, the, the regions that I would like to, to share and address to you. Then the, that's why we have to talk about that the, from the emerging technologies, how should we innovate or reinvent our technologies from the existing technology we have. So we should not just talk about the technologies as on-site or off-site or the sewer system or non-sewer system as such, but we need to think about that, the value chains uh, from this uh, sanitation value chains. If you propose to go for the sewer system, you may need to think about that. Well, if you connect to the, the rather closest, then connect right away to the sewer and pumping to the, the treatment plants. Yes, ideally it would be nice like that, but the cost, and also that uh, if it is a new city, new town, new urban area, you may be possible to do, do that simply. But if it is a kind of old city like in Jakarta or in Bandung, uh, should you convert the, the, the toilets and then connect right away to the sewer system? It's not that easy at all. Or how uh, should we improve here that the, from the, the containments we have, the cesspit cesspool or the septic tank, and then how should you have the better uh, collection system together with the treatment plan and then that would be. So, but we need to have the, the better because of the treatment system from here as well. So the question here would be that uh, whether we 
have to go for the innovative for the process or the containment. You may have seen or you may have heard about that uh, uh, urine diversion toilets or the zero flush toilets or one liter flush toilets. That would be nice. But whether it is acceptable or functioning in the, the, the practice or not, that would be the things that we can think about the innovations. Or the containment is as well. The septic tank mostly is used for contain the, the, the sludge and then the not really having a function of the treatment. Whether we can improve the, the treatment mechanism inside the septic tank, inside the cesspit cesspool or not, so that the, the, the loading to the emptying or the collection services could be lower or even the truck itself whether we can have a better or the, how, how we can have the efficient trucks in the uh, with the, the equipment and then with the, the treatment plant as well rather than just uh, using the, the uh, sand rain base and then apply for the, the, the fertilizers what are the other uh, technology like uh, the convert into the biogas or to the Biodiesel, is that possible or not? So that would be lots of room for improvement that the emerging technology that we can fit in into these uh, figures. Then that's why the MDG and SDG targets we need to co comply with. That would be your uh, ideas or your vision to go set from your countries, whether you just like to go that convert all the city, every city to the several cities, or you still rely on this kind of uh, on-site and with the FICOS flood treatment system, and then you can achieve the targets of the SDG. That's up to you to, to choose. But I mostly uh, believe that most of the developing country will still rely on this uh, on-site or decentralized treatment system together with that the FICOS flood treatment system. We cannot just change right away to the silver system, which is very, very costly in the investment and no uh, revenue is to be generated that easy from the, 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 the silver system. So that's why the ideas for innovation and in, uh, emerging that's to, uh, to come from the containment, from the, the toilet itself, from the collection system and from the technology points. Then the, uh, I just like to share with you some idea that we have discussed in the past and then thinking, oops, thinking about that from the toilets, apart from the low flush or dry toilets, if you can have the anti-germs or odor free, that would be better or not for the dry toilet system. And how can we integrate this kind of a disinfection technologies in the toilets and then we will have less problem to the uh, collection system if we would like to apply right away for the, the, uh, the uh, fertilizers. So that would be the things. And another one would be that if you use a dry toilets, mostly the complaint would be from the odor, but how we can ensure that there would be odor, uh, odorless uh, toilets that, that, that we should provide as well. From the containment or the simple cesspit cesspool system, I'm sure that most of the areas in the, the Indonesia, you still rely on that. But whether it is just functioning as uh, the solid separation only, or whether you can improve or enhance the digestion process inside the septic tank or not, or whether you can reduce the odor or better to compose as well for the sludge for the organic content inside that. In the truck as well, uh, we mostly rely on either the, the six, uh, six cubic meter or 12 cubic meter trucks that uh, from the Japan or from China that uh, produce. But whether we can uh, uh, reinvent into that a smaller size that accessible to the very uh, condensed area like in the slum or in the dense uh, area or with the higher pressure or satellite units. Uh, should there be any kind of processing unit inside the truck as well that we can talk about that later and in the treatments of course the low cost would be ideas for the emerging technologies and then further to that we need to think further about what would be the values of your byproducts apart from just to meet the standards i'm sure that indonesia you also having the standards and later you may need to go for the more stringent standards but it doesn't mean to do just to meet the standard, but if we can define better values of your byproducts, either in terms of the gas, in terms of the liquids, then you can get the returns of your investment. And of course, now today the germ-free would be very important, like the coronavirus. We also identify that 
many of the, the DNA of the virus that can be uh, determined by the, the effects of the, the, the septic tank or uh, the, the treatment plan as well. So that would be the room for innovations. But I just like to give you some ideas that in the past, not only from AIT, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations, they have invested all over the world that uh, uh, the, the best researchers, the best scientists, that how you should reinvent your toilets, you, you invent your treatment technologies. So some ideas that uh, you can go into in, inside, but uh, I'm not be able to, to disclose everything because that would be some kind of that, uh, the patent uh, issues of the technologies. The cartex, they selectively use this kind of so-called electrochemical system to oxidize the waste water. Ideally, that would be very interesting as well that uh, instead of using a simple biodegradation process, but if you can enhance the oxidization process throughout the electrochemical system, then you can get the, the better the biodegradation and, and at the same time you can produce the chlorine uh, uh, from your chloride in your urine and then you can use for that the disinfection process. So that would be some idea and then they are now in the in a way which to, to, to get into the, the commercial products with the, the Chinese partners in, 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 in China. And then they also try to use that the solar panels as well if it is use that much of the, the electricity in the production or in the uh, operating of the electrochemical system. Then that would be some uh, uh, hints of the, 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 you know, the system that they can use for about up to 500 users per day. So uh, it may not be uh, uh, good enough yet for the household system, but it would be good for the, the public toilets or the, the school or the big uh, uh, the, uh, the medium scale of the household system. Then if you would like to get into more details, you can uh, get into this link that uh, what would be the detailed uh, design of that. But of course, they would not disclose at all because the, 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 all the technology it is already patented and then they transfer the technologies to China and hopefully that with the Chinese uh, manufacturing skill, you, we can reduce the cost of investment uh, for these uh, electrochemical disinfection processes. Then the other one that you may have seen many, many uh, video clips from the Bill and Melinda Gates himself, or even Mr. Bill Gates himself, he has uh, demonstrated many times that uh, why don't we use uh, this kind of toilets to treat at source right away so that the uh, Cranfield University, my colleagues up there, they use so called nano membranes to remove. Uh, the, the dirtiness of the, the, the toilet waste water and then they use uh, so-called that uh, the dry system but the dry system is, is that uh, very dry because they use a kind of a nano coating materials that all the fecal matters be not attached to the, the toilet bowls so that you can remove right away and then uh, you can even palletize or gasify the, the gas or the liquid parts from this uh, couple of technologies so it's still a uh, uh, good process that you can have a very good ideas, but to come up to this kind of an industrial design process, that would be interesting parts that uh, you can uh, get much into details that, well, why don't we integrate all the possible technology into the small scale? That, that would be the things that, uh, apart from thinking of only the active slash, the constructed wetlands, or why don't we use this kind of, uh, even up to membrane, that I'm sure that Professor Chandra will talk to you about, the membrane that mostly for the, the uh, drinking water treatment system, but why don't we apply that, even the nano membrane, and then with this kind of a unique waterless uh, flush system, then we can process into one. But of course, the cost would be still the, the plum. And then the other one would be that the people acceptance of this kind of toilets. If uh, I were the user of these toilets, I, once I sit on the toilets, I would have another uh, things to think about that. Well, whether it will be having a certain bombs or uh, exposed, or we have the electricity uh, running down here with the, the screw then whether it will charge me, myself or not, then the acceptable uh, 
uh, acceptability of the, 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 the users of the toilets would be another thing that we have to discuss later, but the idea would be very nice and then we can make use of this system. Then the, the other one that from the, the USF, the University of uh, South Florida, that they use a bit more simple technology that's so-called anaerobic system, but they integrated with the, the uh, membrane bioreactors. I'm sure that uh, many studies in Japan or even in Indonesia, you have heard about that membrane bioreactors, but if we can scale down those kind of uh, anaerobic membrane bioreactors, that also potentially to reduce the, the, the solids and then to produce the gas out of the bioreactors and then the, the treated effluent can be go through the, the, the uh, the flowing of that, the, the plant as well. So that's the system so called the new generators, the apply, the key features would be that the anaerobic bio membrane bioreactors with the hydroponic system. The hydroponic system, that would be a very interesting part as well. That if we uh, carefully consider the minerals or the nutrients remain from outer wastewater, it's still very, very high values. So that if we can grow a certain of that, uh, the, the plants. I'm sure that the vegetables would not be recommended for this the, the hydroponic system, but decorative plants, we can design better that and use. And then the biogas, we can be used with the digestions and also the system as well for cooking and eating, but the design is more important than how we can uh, reduce the size and how we can uh, fabricate into the industrial scale. Then the, the other one, that's Toronto, uh, University of Toronto that have been using and used as a kind of so-called uh, continuous thermal queue. That all the things that uh, instead of waiting for the, the chlorine or some disinfectants, but there would be a certain heat that we can generate from the, the process. And then uh, you can have that the process uh, in, in working for the, the piston and the polystatic pumps to the reactors and then with that kind of an external heat, you can kill the germs and then you can uh, reduce the, the moisture inside your fecal matters and then you can reuse right away. So this is, would be the kind of prototypes that uh, very impressive when I was at the, the, the toilet expo in Beijing that uh, show to the Mr. Buke as well that, well, you can having a kind of so-called a separation device from this as a squat plate and then plastic pumps and small rings uh, processes. So uh, the key uh, feature would be here that the smoldering processes that you can uh, uh, process the fecal matter right away with the heat productions. Then you can generate the, 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 the energy from your uh, fecal matters right away and then use that the so-called uh, catalytic conversion and then the, uh, generate more heat and then in the cover all these kind of processes in the units. But the only thing is that the, the, what would be the cost not that if we apply that kind of uh, so-called advanced technologies, but of course it could be quite effective. You can kill all the germs, you can kill all the, uh, the, the, the problems of that, even the, 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 the bad smell, you can generate up to that uh, right away from the system. You can get the kind of a so-called charcoal, like a charcoal. <clears throat> from the, the, the system that uh, you can produce. The other one that uh, you may have heard a lot for the application of the microbial fuel cells, but uh, this is interesting part that from the, the Bristol University that they have used that the microbial fuel cell to generate the electricity from the, the toilets, which can generate the uh, electricity enough for um, operation of the toilet system itself. So with that kind of uh, modernized MFC, they call it as a multiple MFC units that can uh, uh, generate. And then the, uh, especially for the, the public toilets, you may have seen lots of that, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the, the, the male's rooms or the gentleman rooms that we separate the urine nicely. But why don't we produce electricity out of that and then you can even use for uh, uh, operation of the toilet system and then uh, that could be very simple. But so this would be the things that we can think over the thing that how we can uh, having the higher values of your byproducts instead of using your urine for 
as uh, uh, the liquid fertilizers. But if we can produce the electricity, then it would have more values that you can get more uh, incomes or more revenues to go for your uh, treatment system. But anyway, that's just a kind of that uh, the, the very fancy or you know, very advanced technology just like to share with you. But our ideas from AIT point of view, we got the money, we got the grants from the Ace Foundation as well. We thinking in another way around that we need to think about the sanitation markets. We have to think about the users or the potential buyers, the perceptions as well. Uh, otherwise, we will not be able to sell or deploy the technologies into the markets. So with this kind of uh, product development stage diagram that we have developed in the past uh, six, seven years so far, we try to uh, think into stream that not just advance the technology as such, but we need to consider the user perception or the buyer perception as well. Otherwise, no one would like you to buy our the, the technologies. For example, that uh, from the Toronto technologies, from the technology point of view, this is very fascinating. But for the user perspective, if we talk about the, the users, they go, wow, whether it is uh, having any uh, harms when we use the, the flushing toilets into that or not, or if it's not the flushing water, how can we maintain the system? It's not that easy, but of course, if it is installed into the into the spaceship or into the uh, the space stations, that could be possible because of that advanced technology is that uh, reliable. But if we would like to apply that to the low income society, whether it is acceptable or not, then the, our technologies uh, from AIT we have to study first. Uh, like uh, in the past, we study the the market needs in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Cambodia to represent about that. Yeah, if we have two, uh, three different uh, incomes levels uh, and then different kind of a toilet system in the past, what would be the needs? How can we develop the technology to meet the unmet needs that were important for us? So that, that uh, we develop the technology in a way with that we so-called is so-called as a hybrid research that we on, on one hand we need to develop the technology so-called a technology-led approach. We try to define whatever the possible technology, but of course we need to consult with the market researcher as well to define the unmet needs, to define the, the target customers, or to define what are the real problems. Somehow it would not be just to meet the standards. But what are the other problems that, that we can develop our technologies, the emerging technology to meet the real problems so that we can get the innovation and then we can uh, uh, the deploy the, the technologies to the markets. So uh, just to brief you the bit of the history of our technology evolution of this uh, on-site transportation system that uh, we start uh, the idea generation to brainstorm, to discuss many, many people, not only the engineers or the scientists in the field of water and solar system, but we invite the, the market researcher, we invite the, the business developers to join hand into the brainstorm session that how uh, should we develop the technologies, whether we should like to go the same as the, the US or the European technologies I showed you in the past that, hey, uh, we can go like that or not. And then if it is doable, yes, whether it is uh, applicable to our country, to our cities or not, then we come up with the idea that, well, we will not just to go very, very advanced technology, but we try to define the most possible technologies. Of course, in the first stage, the first two, three years, we have invest lots of money for uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, uh, idea screenings, but we come up to downscale to say that, for example, the solar safety tank idea come up with the idea that, well, uh, many people still uh, realize or accept the septic tank anyway, but if we can enhance the performance of a septic tank, then we can, uh, the, the, the market will, can, will be able to accept the, the, the units or the treatment technology much easier, so I will talk to that later. The other one ideas would be that to use the so-called cyclone separation techniques or technologies that integrate into the system. Then the ideas would be that uh, we will not go for the dry toilet system like uh, the, uh, the crane fuel system, but we think about that uh, yeah, either in Indonesia and then we study in Vietnam, in Cambodia, in Thailand, that no one would like to use the, the dry toilets. They have explained in the past that 
even the very best uh, uh, the toilets, the dry toilets from Europe, but uh, from the long-term operation, they still have the problem of the bad smell. So we have no problem of the, the water. Uh, that, that's like the, the dry uh, countries in the, the Middle East or in the Africa, so that we still go for the, the, the flushing system that the, either the poor flush or the flush tank. Then, but and our idea would be that why don't we use the cyclone separation to separate the solid and liquid parts and treat separately. That would be the same idea as the urine separation toilets, but we separate the, the flushing water with the, out of the, the, uh, the solid parts. Then if we can separate that, then it would be more simple to, to treat the liquid efferents on the solid parts. The other one would be that uh, we realize that, especially for the low income society, we still rely on that set speed, set pool, the cement ring types, not either in the Thailand, but I'm sure that in Indonesia, in the Philippines, in the Vietnam, we also use that for the rural uh, the toilets and such. But how can we improve or how, how can we enhance the performance of that septic tank without any uh, much of modification? We think of that. Why don't we use a certain reactor to put inside the uh, existing cesspit cesspool system and then we can enhance the, the treatment performance, we can capture the solid vectors and then we can treat it out. So that, that would be another idea. That would be the three main uh, technologies that we come up with the, the, the product developments for, for the, the system. Then just to share with you first with the solar septic tank that uh, you may have heard that uh, this will be one of the, the outgoing technologies that we have. And then I just like to share with you the video. Uh, please check that whether you can hear them well or not. You can hear. Okay, that's about the a bit of advertisement. I'm sorry for that, but the, the technology insight, just to share with you the idea is that uh, we have a study start, starting from the lab scale, pilot scale, and the, the field scale that we modify the simple the, uh, 
solar or heat collecting system that I'm sure that Indonesia also use that very effectively. But that simplify the use of that heat exchange from the, the uh, water system and then heat up into the, the tank about uh, 40 to 55 degrees Celsius, depending on the daytime, right, nighttime. We cannot uh, maintain the, the constant temperatures, but it doesn't matter. It can uh, function in quite well for the long term duration. That's where we have uh, noticed so far. Then the, uh, the system that we have with this uh, having the, the idea that we have separate the inside septic tank that having the, the inside part can so called uh, disinfect a certain amount of the, the, the E. coli or the, the pathogen as well because uh, in the middle of the tank the temperature it would heat up about that 60 degrees Celsius, 60 to 65 degrees Celsius, then this can uh, help disinfect uh, a certain amount of the, the, the bacteria, but the outsider of the portion of the, the tank, uh, the, the temperature up about to the 40 degrees Celsius, they can uh, uh, produce the so-called thermophilic biodegradation that would be very fast biodegradation process. So, so that uh, apart from that, having the better uh, BOD CD removal, the other things that we can ensure that would be that the solid accumulations inside the, the septic tank would be much smaller from the conventional septic tank. Then we have less plumb of the, the fecal sludge as well from the point of that uh, we can degrade more solid factors, uh, fractions in the, uh, in the tank. Then the, apart from that, we also need the more detailed research to do about that, whether it is possible that we say it is thermophilic uh, biodegradation or not. And then we use the micro uh, bio techniques to identify the, the groups of the bacteria, the groups of the, the microorganism. We found out that um, many of them are the, the thermophilic bio uh, uh, groups that can uh, use a lot in the, the, the biodegradation process. And then we prove that the TBS the deductions, it would be much higher than the, the conventional septic tank. So that, that would be the proof that uh, we can have uh, the, the, the system uh, in operation. And not only in the labs, and, uh, we are also having uh, the long-term operation right now, almost for five years time already that we maintain the temperatures in the septic tank about at 40 degrees Celsius. Then, uh, we have found out that the, the, the sludge accumulation uh, inside the tank would be much smaller compared with that uh, uh, the conventional uh, septic tank. So that would be the idea is that, the, that the, apart from having the better uh, treatment performance, we can meet the, the, uh, at least a high national standards, but also that the, the, the user, we have less problem of the emptying of the tank. If you have uh, using the conventional a tank, the same tank that we have, yeah, you can notice here that the green toilets here, we use the solar septic tank, but the other one is not. We just use a conventional septic tank to compare right away. We asked uh, one family to use one uh, toilet, another family use another toilet. Then with the same size of the family used for over the two, three years time, we found out that uh, the, the conventional septic tank, they have much higher the sludge accumulation. That's mean that they have a burden to uh, uh, emptying the, the fecal sludge. So that would be our uh, simple ideas, but uh, uh, even if we say that the, the, the cost would be much smaller from the, uh, the, the technologies that I have presented to you from the US, from the, the European the technologies, but still it's quite high, about that two five five thousand US dollar, but compared with the Caltech system, even if they said they, they use the, the Chinese partners to reduce the cost more than half, but one unit for them is about that 15,000 US dollars. So that uh, our solar city technology would be more compatible to the, the, uh, to the markets and then we can meet the same standards on that. So that would be the cost. And then, of course, we have a uh, showcase and then we have uh, demonstrate that, uh, at the, the real application. It's not that only from our uh, labs at the AIT system, but we keep it monitored for long-term operation to prove that it is functioning quite well as well. 
Then the other one, that's so-called a cyclone toilet, and all the cyclone queue that you have uh, heard about that. So we uh, design this kind of cyclone system uh, in a way that we can uh, efficiently separate. You notice here that there would be several design of the cyclone queue. We use CFD, we use the, the real uh, practice of the, uh, the, the, the system to test and then uh, to, to, or you also to use a simple or the call what the, uh, the fecal matters uh, uh, samples that uh, put into the the, the, uh, the toilets and flush it down whether it can separate right away or not. We found out that if we design properly, we can separate more than ninety seven percent of the, the liquids out of the 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 solid parts. So that would be the ideas that we can uh, use and then apply that. But of course, I can disclose that much to you. Uh, this is also the patented technologies. And the, the other things that we also apply that uh, not the same as the, the Professor uh, Michael Hoffman from the Cartex, but we simplify the use of the electrochemical for disinfection only. We are not using the electrochemical for biodegradation process so that we can reduce the cost, so that we can uh, simplify the control of the materials. We don't need to apply the advanced uh, metal materials in as a cathode anodes for this uh, chemical disinfection. But within only about 15 to 20 minutes, we can kill all the germs with our uh, simple design of the, the liquid disinfection for the liquid parts. So with that, we also have the same pilot testing. We having many, many designs. This is one design that we use, and then we have uh, pilot testing. It's not the same as in the lab scale. I'm sure that in ITB, you also have many of the lab scale or the pilot scale, but in the field scale, we have found many, many of the, the, the operating issues that uh, is clogged. It doesn't mean the same thing like uh, we expect only the, the, the fecal matters and flushing water, but somehow the people or the users use the toilets with the very hard to degrade papers as uh, uh, the uh, wiping papers as well. So somehow it clogged or it, it's, it's uh, clogged into the, the units, not clogged into the, 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 uh, the separator itself. So we need to uh, uh, break, it, break it, uh, the units and then we do or redesign and many things from that. Then, Successfully, we can transfer our technology to the SCG chemicals. I'm sure that you know SCG as uh, very well, one of the biggest uh, company in Thailand for the petrochemicals. And then the, also I'm sure that they invested lots of things in, in, in Indonesia. So they accept our technologies and use that. Because that's why I cannot disclose that much of the technology inside to them that they uh, uh, having another uh, developing partners to help in the scaling up the, the or the commercialized the, the technology into uh, commercial scale, so that would have the the up to the level of the, the so-called TIL, the technology readiness level. They said it is already up to eight, which is this mean that product available so that they can use for the ten uh, user per day and uh, can have a life expectancy. It's about that uh, the ten years. And then the, they can meet the, the standard of the ISO 30, uh, uh, 500 uh, standards. I'm sure that you, uh, in your country, you may have heard about this, but I don't think the Indonesian adopt the ISO 30, uh, 30 to 500 standard yet. But anyway, it's the future is that if you can meet the standards, then you can sell all over the countries and ensure that you can uh, get the, the very nice one. The unique idea is that uh, from the transfer technology with the commercial design, with the industrial design, they have the better design in a way which that our the cyclone and then they have better treatment with the more portions for the treatment like uh, equip with the micro bubbles, equip with that uh, the anoxic conditions and then uh, they can operate in a way that they can meet all the standards. And as I earlier mentioned to you, the ISO standard this is very, very stringent. I'm sure that much higher or much stringent than our national standards. For example, that uh, they require the TN removals much more than 75%. And also that uh, the E. coli, it should be zero. So that you have to ensure that it's not just meeting the, 
the national standard, but the TIS system could meet the ISO standard. So that that is uh, the, the the technology is that uh, they, are, they are working out and then soon to to launch into the market. And then I have heard that they will try to uh, do a kind of few scale testing in the Indonesia as well. I'm not so sure where, but uh, they will they will develop the, because they have, they define the potential markets in Indonesia to launch this technology in in the in the market. Then the other one that just share with you some brief idea of the sets to fit technology is that I have said to you that it would be very simple that we try to develop the bio reactors inside the, the existing cesspit cesspool or the cement ring that widely used in our Southeast Asian countries. So we prove of the, the concept and then in the lab, in the pilot scale, we found out that it could be very nice to, to use that. Uh, the other things would be that, well, uh, uh, this is not a big market because this is for the poor people. Then no one would like to uh, accept the technology or transfer the technology to the market yet. But to me, at least, this is quite an interesting part that if we can define that certain technologies that we can improve the existing the, uh, con the system that we have, we know that the septic tanks or the cesspit cesspool it doesn't function as a treatment units. It is just only for uh, containing a certain uh, uh, period of time of the, the sludge and then waiting for the, the tanker to re-empty it out. But if we can improve the treatment performance, it would be very uh, effects to the, 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 the efficiencies of the sanitation system. So that would be the things that we are working out and then try to promote more and more that the, the cess to fit would be the, the right way to go uh, or the emerging technology is that we can integrate better. But of course, we cannot integrate that to advanced technology. Otherwise, it will be too expensive for the, the poor people to accept the technologies. Then the, the, the question would be to you and to me as well that whether this kind of uh, new toilets or new on-site technology can overcome the sanitation challenge or not. Uh, as the developer said, the researcher, most of you, oh, we are too busy. We will go more and more details of that, that the technologies of the, the chemical system, electrochemical system, the solar system, but we may overlook some other things like uh, fecal sludge management issues. So that would be the big question mark that uh, not just the on-site system or the on-site decentralized treatment technology, we need to think about that the fecal sludge management issues as well, that very, uh, very important to my views. So in general, we can say that the uh, fecal sludge do generate about that uh, 200 to 300 uh, uh, gram per person per day. And then the, in Indonesia, you have almost uh, 400 million people just multiplied by that. Then that would be the size of the fecal sludge generated per day. And then you need to manage and ensure that that would be the huge issue. That's why that it would be uh, the, the, uh, the not really uh, comfortable to disclose, but we have to promote it more and more, especially our developing country. It's not the, 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 the way to go for only the advanced technology for the on-site system, but we need to improve the fecal management, fecal slash management systems as well to ensure that it would be not having a problem because uh, if you uh, have heard about this, because large concentration is much, much higher than the uh, uh, domestic wastewater or the municipal wastewater we receive. I'm sure that most of your treatment plants around uh, the Indonesian cities, you may, may not be able to get the BOD up to about 800 or 2,000 milligram per liters, but it is possible for your fecal sludge. That would be very, very high. And in addition to that, they would have much more um, E. coli, so much more helmin eggs as well to spread into the environment if you do not have any better collection or better treatment system. So that would be the huge problem, uh, in, at least to my opinion, that we have to address more as well if we cannot change every people to use the better on-site treatment technologies. We need to emphasize here that, yes, we need to uh, treat more and more better uh, fecal sludge uh, collections. So that would have lots of things that uh, you have seen about that, the virus, the bacteria, the, the protozoa from the fecal sludge. And now today we found out that the viruses can stay longer in that the fecal sludge system. My colleagues from the uh, 
UK, uh, Glasgow University. He mentioned to me that the uh, uh, coronavirus will stay much longer if it is with the, the solid particles. So that, that would be another chance, another thing that we need to take in care of well. Otherwise, we spread again, then the, the, the virus or the other uh, microorganism will spread all over the world. And then the, uh, in addition to that, our developing countries, we have lots of problems of the health needs. It's not only the virus, protozoa, bacteria. We still have a big uh, microorganism like the health means spread all over the countries as well. And then in the sludge itself, it has a very high health mean, which can stay longer times in the, the toilets, in the treatment technologies. So the technology is for the, the fecal sludge. I will not talk and get into details because we have not much of time for that. But the technology is that we have so-called uh, conventional or advanced up to that uh, the hydrothermal carbonization or omni processors. You may have heard from the guest foundation promotion that uh, they try to promote the use of that uh, omni processor also called um, uh, not daily incineration, but they call what um, uh, the steam engine to produce the engine or to produce the energy out of the fecal sludge treatment system. They have been tested in US, in Senegal, and in China as well, but it's still very expensive. Our country still rely on this conventional system, but you notice here that it's not nearly for disinfection process. So not very high efficiency to kill the germs from our conventional technology. That would be another room to improve of our fecal sludge treatment technologies. But another way around that, uh, the things that just not the technology, but we need to think about all the way of that uh, local resources, which is not really uh, good business for the people just to uh, advance the technologies. For example, if you say that, well, we need to add more chemicals for disinfection process to the system, then it could be very costly. How can you we work with that or the locations where to be the, the fecal structure plants? I'm sure that in Indonesia, you have facing the problem as well that if you would like to design the uh, uh, wastewater treatment plants, no one would like to have that treatment plants next to their household, next to their neighbors, so that uh, the location would be much more prompt if it is a fecal sludge treatment. And then the fecal volumes or the end users of that, whether you can define that or not. Then we, whether we need to reinvent or to think about that uh, emerging and new collection and treatment system as well or not. Our ideas at AAT, we try to integrate the, in the collection with the treatments because we have the plum of that the location, because of we have no resources, then we're thinking of that if we can advance the septic tank uh, truck, uh, the, the septic truck to be uh, having the treatment mechanisms, why don't we can integrate that? We uh, initiate with this so-called sanitizer truck that we can have the simple solid liquid separation at the site. We, it means that once it pump it out from the, 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 the tank, from the septic tank, then you can separate the solid uh, liquid right away. And then you can uh, uh, discharge the solid the liquid in a safe space, or you can have a certain disinfection force process to kill all the germ, or you can get it back into your septic tank for further uh, processes. And then the, for the business point of view, so you can increase the number of the household that you can go out for the, the one day times. Instead of that only two, three household a day, you may get uh, more than uh, five uh, or 10 household a day uh, for, for that. So that would be the, our ideas for that we can increase. And then this would be some idea in the past for the first uh, version of this sanitizer truck that we can to separate by using this so-called uh, bio drum or rotating drum filters and then we can separate the solid and liquid parts and then uh, the liquid can be disinfected and then solid will be dry by the heating itself inside the, the truck and then the volume would be very small. I'm sure that the, the septic tank sludge, the sludge uh, percent would not be so high. It would be about that uh, maximum uh, five to 10%. So if we can reduce the volumes, then it means that you can uh, use the truck more effectively into the further collection system, then you get more benefits and then you can get more. Of course, the, the investment cost for the truck itself would be higher, but you don't need any treatment plants. 
if you can meet the standard. So that would be our idea to, to meet and then we can get the, the, the fertilizer to go for agriculture right away. If it is uh, having the high temperatures, most of the, the germ will be die and then it will remain solely the, 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 the organic parts. Then the, the process is working, is still ongoing with the, 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 the industrial partners. Of course, ATV may not be able to replicate this much or this size of the, the system, but we are in a working process uh, with the, the, the industry. Hopefully within uh, next uh, couple of years or the couple of months, I don't know yet, uh, because of the COVID, uh, our industrial partners say, well, we will not have enough money to invest more then the, uh, our ideas uh, would stop right away because uh, we are also not capable or we have no capacity to uh, do this kind of fabrications for our technologies. But anyway, just to share with you at the end that uh, uh, from the sanitation uh, point of view, we need to transform uh, our sanitation processes or revenues to be more commercially variable and then the self-sustaining system in the past, we just wait for the governments, wait for the donor to solve the problem for us. In, in Indonesia, for sure, that they would have lots of that ADP money uh, to come with that the big scale uh, treatment plans. But is that uh, really the, the sustainable system or not? Whether we can think about that circular economy that from the toilet itself, how can we define the valuable by products or products that we can use, that we can make sure that uh, all the people involved in this kind of businesses can sustain their business, like uh, uh, from the, 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 the truck point of views. If they are run in deficits, they will not go for anywhere. If it, if it just uh, having uh, only one treatment plan, uh, I'm sure that uh, if the same in your country, that if this is from my country, that because the, the treatment plant is so far away from the city and then they would not like to go another side of the, 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 the city driving about that for, uh, 20, 30 kilometers away and then back to the service again. That could be too expensive. Then they just go to the bush, to the, the empty lands and then we uh, just about uh, one, two, three kilometers away from the collected uh, the household, then they just discharge because they can get the business. They can run the business. But if we cannot think about that, then we cannot force them to go. If we can force them to go, then no one operate for your city. So that would be the, the dilemmas that we have to think about. If we do not think about that circular economies in a way that, that we can create more value from the containment point of view, from the collection, from the, the transportation, and also from the disposal, from treatment, then uh, we will not be able to success uh, the sanitation and uh, the businesses uh, as such for the, the means. So that's why we need to ensure that uh, we should have the promising uh, because last management study change that uh, we have the captures and then the interaction and then together with that the stakeholders with the adequate desluching sanitation facilities and safe handling uh, transport of the sludge and for treatment as well. And then at the end, we need to save disposal and reuse that to meet the SDG standards, uh, the SDG requirement. So I'm sure that uh, this is the wish to go. And of course, there would have many of the emerging technologies that you can plug in to this kind of a service change. You can think about that even from the captures, like uh, the stakeholders that when you could remove the, the sludge, just the simpler apps, applications, why don't we just uh, apply to that? Rather than just thinking of only the treatment technologies, they would have many other technologies, like uh, uh, if you uh, can bring the, the people who expert in the artificial intelligence, why not asking them to join hand with that? Well, if you would like to know and plan in advance that for the logistic system, like uh, the truck, together with that, if we know in advance that this house if you do not have any laws to control that and sure that in your country you don't have law as well in thailand we don't have law that every two years every three years you have to remove but no we don't have that much but we just rely on that well the people the user will call for the service but it's just not easy for the the business person to plan for when and where they will get the, the their uh, uh, 
customers or where to go. So that if we have more and more kind of that the simulation by artificial intelligence by applications, so that we can make the better service chains. This is an example to you as an emerging technology to plug in into the sanitation service chain. So I hope that if we can get to this the, the better technology, we can achieve the sanitation. 4.0 that we have and then if you invest more uh, we have another book so called the regenerative sanitation with this uh, sanitation 4.0 framework so at the end uh, i just like to share with you that the technology itself may not be able to achieve everything we have only the small area to play with we can play, play with the innovative system reinventing the toilets with to resource processor for example but we need to consider much other as well that the, how we can incentivize the stakeholders, for example, if you develop the new technologies, but no one would like to use, it's useless, right? Or if we go for that for the non-civil sanitation, how we can recognize that all your politicians or your policy makers recognize that, hey, this is the way to go. Or your donors like the World Bank, the ADB, I'm sure that they, most of them don't, doesn't like the non-sewer sanitation system. They prefer more the sewer system or the big centralized system that can uh, give the, but how can we recognize that? Or how can we create the demand for this kind of uh, the system? The other one would be that uh, how can we ensure also called the conducive business environment? As I mentioned to you that it should be just only forced by the government that you should do, what is should do, but what would be the cost? How can we pay for that? So that we need to think about that, how to in incentivize a local investment that uh, whether uh, they can get a better business like uh, the, the truck, if they have the better treatment system, I just I can share with you briefly about one of the private service provider in Thailand, they can earn about that uh, 1 million US dollar a year from this kind of uh, the, the businesses just to have their own treatment system, then they can access more markets so that they can get into the, the system. And then we don't need to force them to do anything. But if you can ensure that where they have the conducive business environment, then they can do go, go, go for. But of course, we cannot avoid this kind of policy and regulations in your country if you would like to get more technology to be adopted, to be adapted in your country. You need to have the, the supporting policies, not really the standard to control, but for example, that the, to promote of the resource recovery, how can we promote at the beginning stage? So similar to that, the, the, the solar roof, for example, you may need to have a certain subsidized first at the beginning stage and then let the, the business go and then later you can get the, 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 the sustainable uh, practice for that. Of course, of course, you need, we need more standardization process as well that we cannot just welcome any new technologies into the markets. They may have a certain issue, a certain harmful to your people so that we need a certain standardization as well. So the sanitation is not just a treatment business as such, but I think, I think it would be about that the infrastructure development that you're on, on site or your emerging technology. We need to think about that. What are your infrastructure available so far or the facility you have? Then you can plug in your new technologies. Otherwise, it's useless. It's just a, a kind of a new technology for the people and then no one use and then it's, it will be uh, killed uh, at the same time. So with that, thank you very much. And then uh, I'm sure that they would have certain minutes for your questions and then I can please to, to answer to you. Thank you, Professor Chandra. Okay, Kamarat. So I think sir, you take the break first before <laughs> we are moving to the uh, discussion session. So I will probably, I will summarize in Bahasa Indonesia, just in case there's for someone who are not really get the uh, very good in English. Uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian, rekan-rekan tadi uh, sudah disampaikan oleh Profesor Tamarat uh, berkaitan dengan uh, emerging technology dalam untuk onsite treatment. Jadi memang ini adalah untuk mengisi uh, gap ya. Jadi kita tahu bahwa sistem uh, centralized itu adalah sistem yang uh, mahal, kemudian uh, Uh, decentralized uh, atau sistem on-site sebenarnya ada 
kan ada sistem centralized, decentralized, dan on-site. Nah, memang uh, sistem yang on-site ini yang uh, bisa mengisi mungkin uh, bagi negara berkembang salah satu goal antara. Ya. Jadi tidak mungkin bisa uh, menyediakan dalam waktu yang singkat mencapai sistem yang tersentralisasi. Nah, teknologi-teknologi untuk yang on-site ini kan biasanya konvensional. Nah, pada beberapa tahun terakhir banyak pemikiran-pemikiran untuk meningkatkan teknologi on-site tersebut. Tadi sudah disampaikan oleh Pak Tamarat ada yang sangat advance, jadi sangat advance sekali teknologinya dari negara-negara maju ya. Uh, baik dari Amerika Serikat, dari uh, Eropa. Nah, Pusat Amarat menawarkan yang uh, lebih uh, apa? Yang lebih uh, memungkinkan bisa dibayar ya. Ter- termasuk tadi ada solar uh, apa? Uh, septic tank, ada kemudian yang menggunakan sistem cyclone, kemudian juga uh, memperbaiki uh, sistem yang cesspool dan uh, uh, kemudian juga menyampaikan bahwa Uh, tidak cukup hanya uh, di on-site saja, tetapi juga uh, sistem uh, apa uh, yang rantainya itu misalnya uh, tadi pengangkutan dan uh, di dalam tadi dibicarakan tentang uh, truk tinjanya ya, dari truk tinjanya tidak sederhana saja, tetapi juga ada proses-proses pemisahan yang nantinya bisa uh, apa meningkatkan kemampuan. Tapi tadi saya katakan bahwa ini semuanya sanitasi itu bukan cuma olah saja, tetapi juga ada pembangunan infrastruktur. Uh, 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 Tamarati, can close the, the the screen, share screen, so because uh, there is a, some uh, question will be displayed by uh, by the MC. Uh, Ahmed, you can uh, probably there some uh, question. Okay. Ah, so the, the so that one is the uh, from the, the the yellow one. So, do you have a communal system, or do you know the sunny mass, right? You have heard the, in Indonesia about the the sun, uh, sunny mass system. This is uh, it is used in implemented in Thailand, and of course uh, he, he's saying that acquiring uh, acquire the land for the communal system is a uh, is sometimes is difficult. Uh, <laughs> So that 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 is there any uh, communal uh, uh, system in your in in Thailand? Yeah, there there are, but not so many. But uh, uh, it depends on the local authorities. It's not from the the, the, the central governments to allocate the land for so this kind of uh, public uh, toilets or the communal septic tanks. It is uh, depends on the, the local authorities, like. Um, in the, the, the dense uh, population, populated areas in the Bangkok cities. The, the Bangkok city will allow the, the, the district levels to discuss with the, the local community that, hey, this is a public area, whether you like to use that for the communal septic tank to install the public toilets or not. It is up to the negotiation between the, the communities and also the, the public uh, space that we would like to use that or not. So it's not just only for the government lands or the privately owned land. Somehow, uh, in a certain communities, they may use that the privately owned lands to offer for this kind of uh, communal septic tank. Yes, of course, it's quite difficult for sure in any way. Yes. So that one, uh, I think the the next question about the fecal slot management management. I think you already mentioned. Yeah. Uh, uh, about probably you can say in brief. That, uh, sure. How is the fecal slot management? Well, uh, in, in our solar septic tank, we don't need to add any new microorganisms. But uh, 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 from our fecal matters, it, it contains a lot of that good microorganism, microorganism already. Then if we add a certain temperatures up to the, the about 40 to 55 degrees Celsius, then selectively the, the microorganisms that can survive it can grow up much faster, like uh, uh, methanogens, 
uh, the thermophilic methanogens, they can grow much faster and then they can uh, activate more, whereas uh, the others will not be that so dominant. So we don't need to add any new mechanism inside that, but uh, they would have a certain thermophilic uh, mechanism to grow. The second question would, would be that interesting would be about the rainy season. Yes, in Thailand, we also have the rainy season right now. And of course, in the rainy season, we cannot capture that much of the, the solar heat or solar energies. But anyway, uh, uh, it will not affect that much because uh, we also having a certain the circula circulation if the, the, the water temperatures from the roof, it is uh, lower and then the, the temperature in the tank, we stop circulation so that we will not uh, lose any heat outside the septic tank. So it will not happen every day for the rainy seasons. But I'm sure that in, in Indonesia, you will have facing mm. a problem during the rain. Uh, in yes. Thailand, it, we have not so long rainy, rainy times uh, for one day. For example, it will be rain about that one or two hours at most. But in your country, you may have another problem that we need to think out over that, well, how can we maintain the temperatures during the rainy seasons? But throughout the years, we found out the temperature average is not that much big difference, even if it is in the cooler seasons, like in the December time, it's not that much different. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah there's, there's another question. I think, so, uh, uh, Ahmed, you, you can show the, uh, the question. It is, it is about the uh, energy balance. Uh -huh. So that is the energy value from the solar cell yeah. is get the, <laughs> enough uh, for maintaining the, 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 the system. And then what, so that, yeah. Well, the energy balance, we also have a study as well with the professor from South Africa. They also interested to use our technologies and then uh, uh, with that kind of a thermal considerations or the thermal balance, we found out that, that this uh, with our uh, solar uh, penetration to uh, the, the system, it is more than enough to heat it up up to about that 40, 50 degrees Celsius. Of course, the higher the better, but you have to pay more for the, the, the solar panels. So we try to uh, optimize that uh, the, the higher you can kill, killing more the pathogens for sure, but uh, the heat, you need to invest more the energy to, to do that. Then we are, we are not achieving to, to that to the 60 to 65 degrees Celsius then the, it is just to optimize. And then for the whole year round, uh, that could have enough to produce the, 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 the products like uh, the, the, the good uh, uh, treatment, the, the, the treated efference. But of, of course, if you consider about that, the energy to be uh, obtained from the biogas, it's not that much compared with that uh, uh, conventional digestion process of course it's much higher than it's higher than the, the uh, solar septic tank or conventional septic tank the, the energy or the bell gas is, is produced higher volumes but uh, it's not that we, we consider the, the energy out of the bell gas produced from this uh, solar septic tank is not worth to invest another uh, technology is to burn the bell gas on one hand, we think about that, well, it's quite dangerous to burn it out and then uh, use it that if that would have more technologies that to be invest that the value of the energy to be put in from the biogas is not that uh, worth to invest. So that we just uh, uh, think about the other things to release the, the, the biogas similar to the conventional septic tank. Okay. But uh, the, the biogas production in the a uh, solar septic tank is 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 relatively hi uh, higher than conventional system right it is yeah okay okay and uh i think so uh, the other question is regarding because you have mentioned the electrochemical for the uh the the, the disinfectant mm. so uh i don't know that one is a patent or probably you 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 can disclose or not <laughs> i don't <know>. I'm <laughs> I can, 
I can share with you some ideas about the, the, the practice or the operational processes of that the electrochemical disinfection that we apply in a way that, that is not that the continual uh, uh, apply of the electrochemical charge into the system. Uh, you, you, you may realize that our toilet wastewater or incoming wastewater into the system is not that continuously like uh, the big treatment plants. Uh, you may have only a few hours a day that having the uh, water or wastewater come to your system. Then uh, we can optimize the cost of operation of electrochemical system that once you have the water, then you can uh, activate the electrochemical processes to disinfect the treatment uh, system and then we can disinfect the, the, the liquid efferents. Uh, but of course, they would have a certain technique that uh, how should you decide the appropriate uh, retention time for the, the electrochemical processes and also that to avoid the, the, the bubble gas that can cause another uh, electric uh, short circuiting in, in, into the system. That, that would be another thing. But ideally, that would be the very simple process that you just control by uh, using your urine that can uh, that having the chloride and convert into the chlorine, which is very effectively to kill all the germs. That what we have uh, uh, observed, we have uh, uh, this, um, uh, noticed so far. Okay, so that that is, this is a uh, uh, it's converted the chloride become the chlorine. So the chloride become the uh, disinfect. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, the chlorine uh, it become become the disinfectant. Right. For the, okay, right. okay. That uh, this one is. Uh, I mean, uh, the other question is uh, because you have mentioned about the 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 uh, this, this, the 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 uh, what is it, the cent centrifuge uh, not centrifuge the the uh, separation between the cyclone. Uh, the cyclone the cyclone you have mentioned of the cyclone I think it may be a lot of participants wonder what is the purpose of cyclone okay. <laughs> to, to, well, to the system because it is quite interesting yeah one. yeah that, that that's uh, our concept would be that we try to separate the solid and liquid right away before uh, treatment process to be happen then once you're flushing the toilets if you have uh, uh, contact contact time from the liquid parts to the, the solid parts in the very short period of time then the, the concentration, either BOD or the, the, the microorganisms would be small, much smaller. So that once after you flushing the toilet, if it is go through the cyclone separation units, then we can separate the liquid, which is the much lower concentration to be further treated. And at the same time, you can simply use the drying technologies for the solid parts, solid fractions, then on one hand, you can kill the germs with the, the, the heat. And then if you, if you would like to reuse that as a fertilizer, it would be more sim simple to, to use that as a, the higher uh, solid content in the, the liquid parts, in the solid parts. And at the same time, in the liquid fractions, you can use a simple technologies like uh, the simple aeration process with the electrochemical processes, then you can meet the standards. So that what, what would be the concept that uh, the, it more or less like uh, the dry toilet system or urine separation toilets, but uh, we do not ask the people to stop using the water to flushing, but we separate right away after flushing, then the, uh, you can simplify your treatment processes, but you need to have two portions. One is for liquids, another one is for uh, solid parts. Mm. Okay, so that, uh... Do you try to the because of, you spray it with the cyclone, the solid part, and then the liquid uh, part? So mm -hmm. for uh, the solid part, could, could be goes to the you septic uh, solar uh, solar septic tank, or uh, it can be treated with uh, with this system or not? Well, no, we haven't uh, integrated that system. The the the, te the technology that we transfer to the the SCG. Uh, uh, we, they use the so-called um, the screw dryers 
Oh, okay. The screwdriver to to right away receive the, the separated solids and then get into the screwdriver. Uh, with that, the the intermittent operations, not uh, continuous operation, just once a day operations. They can produce the the solid fertilizers from the liquid uh, from the the the, 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 the tanks. Uh, I think it's about uh, less than one kilogram per day in that very dry forms and then no uh, germs because the very heat, very high temperatures is up to about that uh, 90 degrees Celsius in the screw drying process. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you can get the, the right away the byproducts. Okay, so that uh, I think so this one is the last question about the fecal slot uh, uh, management. Hmm. So that the fecal slot in, in Bandung, uh, the, we have, we call it the uh, what you call it? Uh, it the, the fecal slot uh, will be goes to the. Uh, we have the uh, uh, lagoon. So it, so in in Bandung we have the the lagoon for the uh, central centralized treatment for the part not for not for the all of the cities, uh. but uh, only part of the city. And we mm -hmm. have a lagoon. So they. Uh, the core treatment between the uh, the speckle slot that goes to the uh, to to the to the lagoon. Mm. So that is there any problem with this kind of the core treatment between the speckle slot in the lagoon? Well, uh, ideally it should be okay, but the the the, the problem would be on the the, the microorganisms that. The, 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 the pathogenic mechanism that especially for the helmet eggs I'm sure that the, the lacoon system will not be able to kill the, the helmet eggs mm. it may be able to kill a certain E. coli or fecal coliforms but not the helmet eggs then the, the remaining uh, helmet eggs either in the sludge cell in the bottoms of the, the, the lagoons or floating into the liquid parts that remains a problem that, that you need to take care of. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be ideal that uh, if you have the centralized wastewater treatment system, then you need to integrate uh, the, the fecal sludge to be treated as well. But if it is the, the conventional or mechanical system like the uh, actual sludge, it is a kind of a chop loading to the system as well. For oh, the sure. lagoon, it's okay. Mm -hmm. you, you can receive much higher the chop loadings but if it is a, a conventional aeration process, I'm sure that you will feel lots of harm of the chop loadings in terms of the ammonia, in terms of the, the salinities from the, 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 the fecal sludge as well into the system, but it is doable to, to manage that. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Kamarat. I think uh, the time is up. We have to uh, finish our session, but uh, stay, uh, Tamarat, you still stay in the room because we will take the photo session. But Ahmed, you can close the session uh, from the YouTube. So we can, after that, we, we take the photo session. Ahmed, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, uh, Professor Tamarat. And thank you very much also for your uh, for moderating the session, uh, Professor Chandra. Uh, maybe. Uh, for Professor Tamara, she first wanted to here. So maybe for the committee who... So we we have to take the... We can take the... Uh, just a minute, just a minute. So we'll take the photo session. Yeah. Why okay. Not? Uh, for all the participants, uh, you may turn on your camera. You may turn on your video for the photo session. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Tamara. Okay, Tamara. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terima kasih. So thank you. Thank you. See you again soon. Some, some. So thank you very much. Terima kasih. So you leave the. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Ya, baik, uh, dikarenakan waktu telah menunjukkan 
setengah sebelas waktu Indonesia Barat mungkin uh, kepada Profesor Chandra mungkin mau istirahat dulu atau gimana? Ya sebentar sebentar atau saya ke kita waktu waktu istirahat untuk Profesor Chandra dulu baik uh, untuk uh, sesi kedua untuk hari ketiga ini uh, akan dibawakan oleh Profesor